Hey everyone, this is Jonas with Accuracy and welcome back to Accuracy Home Practice. Well, it's been a hot minute since we've last done this, so let's dive right in. Today we're going to look at how to learn hovering. The very first thing you do when you start RC helicopter flying. The only prerequisites for this tutorial are that your transmitter is configured and all the axes move properly, as well as that you have your switches and functions set up properly. And then we can dive right in. Now let's discuss one option uh, that will help you immensely. And that is flabberless setups. Uh, we have different default configuration for the flabberless setup. As you can see here in settings simulation. Oh, let me make this full screen real quick. Um, in settings simulation, you can actually select which preset new models come with. Select beginner here and your helicopter will be much more easy to manage and much more beginner friendly. Speaking of helicopters, let's talk about how to choose a helicopter for your first hover flight. Well, we obviously do have a lot of helicopters in accuracy, really big selections with a ton of different models. As a beginner in the real world, you would probably opt for something like the OMP Hobby M2, which is a very small, easy to handle, cheap to crash helicopter, Logo 200 as well. Something like a 450 might also be an option, but that's actually not my recommendation for the sim. I would go with something larger, a 700 size helicopter. Uh, which one you choose does not really matter. Something like the Goblin Urukai or the MH6 Little Bird, due to their fuselages, will be a bit more docile to handle. But I think I'm going with the Goblin Raw 700. So let's select this helicopter, hit fly, and wait until it loads. So we have reached flight mode. We are out here at the Urcha Center Stage scenery with our Goblin Raw. Um, scenery wise, you can pick whatever you like. We have a couple different sceneries. I would recommend going with a photo scenery just because they are less distracting than the free roam sceneries, which you do not need for your first flight. In terms of additional sim setup, uh, click flyers once, make sure you're in beginner mode just to make sure the helicopter flies docile, uh, click camera. And I would recommend going with ground in view, pilot view keeps the helicopter always centered in the, uh, in the field of view. Ground in view tries to keep the ground in view when you fly up so you can better orient yourself. Otherwise, not much to adjust here and we are configured for our first flight. One thing I will do is bring up the Visual TX and switch on the second one. This is an alpha version, so it's a bit buggy. I will give you mode one as well as two. Mode one on top, mode two on the bottom. So this is my collective, this is my yaw, this is elevator, and this is aileron. Uh, let's briefly discuss what each function does. If you've never flown a helicopter, the collective changes the angle of all rotor blades on the rotor head collectively. So it increases or decreases the overall rotor thrust, allowing you to climb and sink. The tail rotor function does the same for the tail. It collectively changes the angle of the tail blades, allowing you to yaw the helicopter left and right. So it basically rotates around the main shaft. Elevator and aileron change the cyclic pitch of the main rotor and it, what it does, it basically modulates the uh, angle of the rotor blades around your revolution and allows you to pitch forward, backward, right and left. In terms of RPMs, you can see here on the right, we have our RPM indicators and with the RPM switch you assigned previously in functions, you can choose which RPM you want. We will start out in RPM1 because lower RPMs give a more docile reaction from the helicopter and generally tame down how it flies. So if we then switch out of throttle hold, the helicopter will spool up and we are ready and configured for our first flight. Okay, and so now that our engine's running and we are in the lowest RPM, which is about 1,399, 1,400 RPM for this Goblin Raw, we can look at our first takeoff. 
So we remember the collective control changes the rotor thrust. So if we move that up, the helicopter will gradually lift off the ground. So we, you will notice it drifts right away. So what we do is we use the cyclic to stop that drift and bring it back. Hovering a helicopter is pretty much like balancing a marble on a mirror. The helicopter will always try to drift off slowly in one direction and you have to correct for it by tipping the rotor disc in the opposite direction. You can get a helicopter into a hover where it's stable for like 20-30 seconds but then it will start drifting again as long as it does not have automatic position hold. So as stated, left stick, rotor thrust, raise left stick, helicopter rises, lower left stick, helicopter sinks. Left stick, uh, I'm speaking in mode 2 here, your rudder will rotate the helicopter left and right. All you want to do is to keep the tail in line for now. So you're looking straight at the back of the helicopter. The cyclic tilts the rotor disc, so if you move the cyclic forward, the rotor disc tilts forward. Move the cyclic back, rotor disc tilts back. The idea here is that we change the thrust vector of the rotor to move the helicopter around. And as you can also see, if I tilt the rotor disc, I need to compensate with my collective a bit, otherwise the helicopter will start sinking before it gets into effective translational lift, but we are not going that fast in this tutorial. So you will pretty much be constantly correcting on at least three axes. Uh, if your tail gets a bit out of hand, it will be four axes. So this is the first thing you practice. Hold your altitude and hold the helicopter in front of you. If it starts drifting to the right, bring it back with gentle left cyclic. If it starts drifting forward, bring it back with gentle aft cyclic. Be sure to make small movements on the stick don't let go of the stick and do not let the stick bounce. Uh, many beginners I see, they will con try to control the helicopter like this. I'm sorry if that's very loud in the recording right now. Uh, they will make a cyclic movement and then let go of the cyclic. This is not ideal because you lose control whenever you let go of the cyclic and can make n uh, no more control adjustments until you grab the cyclic again. So yeah. That's your first thing to practice, keeping the helicopter in one spot, keeping your altitude and keeping your position with the cyclic. Next thing to practice is rotating the helicopter so you look at it from a slightly different angle. So we can rotate it 45 degrees to the right. Now we're looking on the right side of the helicopter. That kind of changes our perspective. Obviously our control axes are still the same. If we Give forward cyclic, the helicopter will still pitch forward, aft cyclic, it will still pitch aft. But the movement direction changes, so if we push forward, the helicopter will now also move to the right relative to us. So we now need to incorporate this into our flying. For example, if the helicopter drifts just to the right, I will not just need left cyclic to bring it back, but also aft cyclic. So I'm pulling left and aft a bit, and it comes back straight to me. Same thing if it drifts forward. I need right and aft cyclic to bring it back. Once you understand this correlation of control axis to movement direction, you can take it one step further. Turn the side towards yourself. Now pushing forward makes the helicopter fly relative to you to the right. Pulling back makes it fly to the left. This requires you to kind of change your, the way you think about your helicopter and imagine that you are sitting inside this helicopter and controlling it from the inside. So look for a reference point, for example, the tip of the canopy up here and think about what it does if you move the control. So if I pull, the canopy tip will move up. Same for the rotor disc. It will tilt back and make the helicopter fly in the direction of the tail boom. Once again, it's like balancing a marble on a mirror. Adrian really wanted me to use that reference. So practice, practice, practice. Bring it back with small corrections. Hold it in place. Once you're comfortable, keep turning. Now we are nose in. Nose in means that everything is completely reversed. If you pull the cyclic back, 
the helicopter will fly away from you instead of towards you. Push it forwards. It will come towards you instead of away from you. Cyclic to the right. Helicopter moves left instead of right. Cyclic to the left. Helicopter moves right. So this time around, you will not be able to at all comprehend how to control the helicopter in this hover from merely in which direction it's going. Rather, you really need to think about what the helicopter is doing. Same con concept as before. Look for a point on the helicopter as a reference and try to fly that point. Uh, yeah, same thing. Practice, practice, practice. Does it get away from you to the front right? You need front right cyclic to correct and bring it back. Does it fly away from you? You need forward cyclic to correct. And just like that, you can move the helicopter in space and hold it in place. Just to complete this, also do side and hovering with the left side. One additional thing I want to talk about, if you find this too difficult to control, if the helicopter is still too twitchy for you, drop the simulation speed. You can find that by going into system settings, simulation, simulation speed. Drop it all the way, 30%. Helicopter will now fly at 30% physics speed. So even if you go full deflection, it will move relatively docile and be easy to catch again. Also, if you place it vertically, it will start falling very slowly, only at 30% of the Earth's normal acceleration due to gravity. So learn to hover your helicopter in the slower mode and then bump it up. Go into settings. From 30, we can go to 60. 60% 60 simulation speed, learn to hover again. See, helicopter is a bit quicker, but still not as quick as at 100%. Keep hovering, hover, hover, learn to hover. We he. Go back into simulation speed. Bring it up to, I don't know, 85. Try again. See if you can hover here. And doing this, you can gradually increase the simulation speed and adapt to every step of this ladder, effectively stepping up difficulty as you go. And eventually, you will arrive at 100%. We do not recommend going beyond 100%. This is only really just for fun. Uh, if you're looking for a real challenge, so this is 200% and everything is very exaggerated, very fast, and it feels really, really slippery, so would not recommend. Also, flying 3D is very hard in this because gravity is twice as strong and the tail is twice as fast and everything is horrible. Uh, yeah, so just leave the simulation speed at 100% for your real flight training. And once you're comfortable with these, you can try our hover trainer. Our hover trainer is pretty much a, let's do nose in, an aid to help you practice your hovering precision. So we chose nose in. So we're going to do nose in. And you will see, as long as I hover over the circle, the training progress circle will fill. If I drift out of the circle, the progress will rapidly empty. So my goal is to hold the helicopter stable over the circle without turning too far or drifting off too far while the progress bar is filling. This is a relatively short interval. Uh, but if you can do this on your first attempt, second attempt, third attempt, you're already really good. Hover training complete. We also have a bit of a step up from this. Click leaf training, click training, follow, and we can do side to side, forward and back, and figure eight. Let's do figure eight. The target will then start moving in a figure eight in front of us, and we have to follow it with our helicopters. So we are now actively moving the helicopter around in a hover to follow the target while it's doing its figure eight pattern. If you move out of the target, obviously your progress will empty again. And you need to keep an eye on the helicopter, the helicopter's position, speed, attitude, and the circle on the ground, which is absolutely not easy. But if you can do it, you will be rewarded with a little message if we can actually complete this training. Training complete. 
And with that, all that's left for me to say is thanks for watching. Happy practicing. And see you next time.